significant figures. Um, when we conduct experiments in chemistry class, we're going to use the uncertainty rules that we've talked about to figure out where to round off numbers and how to report numbers with the correct number of decimal places. Um, so the, all the rules that we've covered in the previous video and that we've covered in class, that's what you should be following for lab reports. Um, the reasons why you always want to record um, all of the certain digits as well as the one estimated digit, which is what we've talked about before, is that all of these digits are important or they are what we could call quote unquote significant. They matter. Um, all of the certain digits obviously matter because we know about them with certainty. And then we should take our best guess at the next one because that gives us a little bit more information. That first estimated digit is useful. Um, a second estimated digit would not be useful. If we don't uh, know anything about the, the tenths place or if we're uncertain about the tenths place, then we shouldn't report anything about the hundreds place because then we're extremely uncertain about it. So that's why we only include the one uncertain, one estimated digit, but we do consider it to have some value. Um, and in a lab, you should use these rules that we've talked about, one digit of uncertainty and rounding your final value to match your uncertainty in the decimal places. Um, that's how you'll round off in lab reports. But on test questions or just other times, if you're doing math and you're not sure where to round off, the system that we use uh, is known as significant figures. It's just a tool to figure out uh, which of the numbers matter and where should I round off my final value. So first of all, you need to know how to determine the number of significant figures in a number. The really quick, simple way to, instead of trying to memorize a list of rules, is just to know if there's a decimal place present. So is there a decimal place? Yes. Um, start at the left-hand side of the number, and as soon as you hit a number that's not zero, then you count everything after that. So if I start from this side, I hit a non-zero number when I get to three. So I'm going to count this is significant, and that is significant, and that is significant. So that means that for the first one, uh, there are three significant figures. Um, for the next one, when I move from the left, I don't hit a non-zero number until I get to the five. So I only start counting when I get to this five, and then I count one, two, three. This first zero is not significant. Um, it's really just a placeholder. Uh, it gives me the magnitude of the number, but it doesn't really matter that much. If I use scientific notation, I could get rid of that number um, and, and still report the value with accuracy. So moving on, uh, the two, I start counting at the two. All four of those are significant. In this one, I don't start counting until I get to the four. Four, three, zero, so there's three. In scientific notation, it usually gets rid of those unimportant values, these unimportant zeros here, these insignificant ones. So this one has two, and this one has three. So we write in those numbers. We had three, we had three, four, three, two, and three. Um, again, if I had taken the time to put this into scientific notation, it would become 5.05 .05 times uh, 10 to the negative one. And now you can see that I've gotten rid of that placeholder zero, that zero that wasn't really important. It's just an order of magnitude. And what I'm left behind with are the three significant values. Uh, same thing would go for this one. If I move the decimal place over and put it into proper scientific notation, um, I get rid of those placeholder zeros, the insignificant zeros, and I'm left with the three zeros that matter. Uh, the, the zeros at the end matter because they imply that you know with greater precision something about this number. So if you use a balance that measures to two decimal places and you get exactly 3.00, it would be silly to just say three because the balance told you more than that. It, it gave you these extra digits. So uh, those extra zeros at the end are are always going to matter. Um, they, they give you information about precision. This second part doesn't come up as often on the IB exam, values without decimal points. But technically, if a value doesn't have a decimal point, then the way to do sig figs is to start on the right-hand side um, and, only, again, count once you hit a non-zero digit. So in this case, the first one, you don't hit a non-zero number until you get to the three. So there's only one sig fig in the number 300. Uh, in this one, it, there's three, in this one there's one, and in this one there are two. Okay, So uh, just to summarize, one sig fig, three sig fig, one sig fig, two sig figs. Okay, Again, and if you do scientific notation, uh, you'd get something like that. 
this would be how you write it with the one sig fig. Okay. Um, this one, you'd say 4.3 times 10 to the second. Um, and then you would see the number of sig figs a bit more easily. Uh, so if there is no decimal point at the end, right, if, unless it says that, then you assume that these two zeros don't matter and they're just orders of magnitude. Those are the rules. Okay, where does this matter? It really matters in calculation. Adding and subtracting um, actually has nothing to do with the number of significant figures. When you add and subtract numbers and you try to decide where to round off, you are limited by your least precise number, the number with the least number of decimal places. So if I add together 4.3 and 5.05, .05, I need to round my number off to the tenths place because the, of the two numbers, the one with less decimal places is 4.3. And so that number has to be rounded off to match. And that makes sense. If this is my recorded value, then I'm uncertain about the tens place. In this one, I'm uncertain about the hundreds place. But overall, I'm going to be uncertain about the tens place because uh, if I'm uncertain about the tens place in one of my numbers, then I, I can't really be certain about it in my final answer. So even though when I add them together, I get 0.35, if I'm not certain about this first one, right, then I have no business telling you about the next one because I'm really uncertain about it. So I have to round away that five, okay? Um, same thing goes here for subtraction. Again, you uh, you're you got the tens place here, so you have to round off to the tens place there. Um, in multiplication and dividing, this is where sig figs matters. If you multiply two values, uh, you round to the lower number of significant figures. So in this one, there are all three of these values have significance, and this one, all four have significance. So you've got three sig figs, you got four sig figs, your answer should have three sig figs. What would be wrong though is to list that answer as just 25 meters squared. That would be incorrect because that would only have two sig figs and you would not be reporting as much precision as you really should be. So you let the number of sig figs guide you. Um, even if like this, 10 divided by two and a half is four, four sig figs in this number, there's three sig figs in this number, the answer should only have should have three significant figures. So you got the four from doing the math in your calculator, but you should add 0 0.00 to get three sig figs in the final answer as well. So those are the rules for determining uh, significant figures, the numbers, and then rounding in calculations. Uh, Rewatch if you need a little bit more help, and we'll answer questions in class.